The Boston Bruins have had a lot of surprise players this year, and one of those just happens to be an RFA that needs to be re-signed by the Boston Bruins this offseason. So I'm going to be talking about that here, as well as some major injury updates that we have. Some players returning, and some players are just starting to skate once again. Some very th big things before the playoffs as well. Finally, as a Jim Montgomery quote that gets every Bruins fan excited, and something that gets us amped for the playoffs. So I'm going to be talking about all of that here in this video. Before we get into that, though, we know that 88% of you guys watching right now are not subscribed to the channel. If you're looking for a spot to get all of your Boston Bruins news, you're in the right spot. Make sure to hit the sub button. Join me along here as we cover the Boston Bruins heading into this very, very exciting upcoming playoffs. And we are also very close to 1,000 subscribers. So if we can hit that before the beginning of the playoffs, that would mean the world to me here. The sport's been insane. I very much appreciate all of you guys. But let's get straight into this video and not waste any more time with the first topic here are the Bruins have a huge decision coming. And this is basically about Jesper Boakvist. What is going to happen with him? He's an RFA in this offseason, played very well the beginning of the, or the, the latest of this season, started off a bit slow, made his way to the AHL, didn't crack the opening day roster, played very well down there, and is now here in a very integral part of this team. So this is what this article said from, uh, I believe it was The Athletic. It might not be. I do apologize if I got that wrong, however. It basically says this, noting how Boakvist's hard work has allowed him to land a permanent spot in the lineup, they must re-sign him this offseason. The pending RFA is still young enough that his game can improve, which only helps his case for getting a new deal with Boston. And I absolutely agree with this. I love Jesper Boakvist's game. He plays very well in the center uh, the center depth at the current stage the Bruins are in with that, missing out on Krejci and Bergeron, uh, the two biggest losses of the offseason. And he fills that depth role really well. But with his age, with his ability that we've seen this season and throughout his uh, very young career yet, he could definitely turn in uh, or change from a depth center to at least a top six forward. I, I definitely see his potential there. And I think that he, he would be a very good opportunity for the Bruins to have something happen internally with the centerman instead of going outwards and looking for one and maybe not getting the guy they want or anything along the lines of that. We know that the centers are a very hot commodity in NHL free agency, the trade deadline. So having that security of having someone come from within is something the Bruins would definitely like to have here in Jesper Bokvist. But I'll pull up his stats here. As you can see, the 10 goals and 13 assists he had in his 31 AHL games at the beginning of the season earned him that uh, that boost, that promotion to the NHL. And although he's only had 14 points in 43 games, he's been very, very integral for the team that this has been uh, th as of late, especially in these last four wins against the Panthers, Hurricanes, Predators, and Capitals. Uh, and he's been just someone that really has shown that he can have a major increase in his game while being still a very crucial part of this team so far. You can see he's on the third line center uh, as of late. That's kind of been his role for the past few weeks and majority of his NHL tenure. But with Charlie Coyle and Pavel Zaka being the top two centers on this team, um, I, I do think that he will eventually pull into one of those roles as long as the Bruins re-sign him, which is really my main point of contention here is what I want to see the Bruins do. You can get him at a cheap price, too. He's not going to be someone expensive yet. A bridge deal, a long-term, whatever the Bruins are feeling, I think that he is the right option to sign for an extension, whether it be long-term, whether it be a bridge deal, um, whatever it is. Whatever it is, I think that Jesper Boakvist has so much potential that the Bruins cannot let go of him, cannot trade him, and must sign him to a, a further contract extension. But speaking of some more forwards, we have some very good injury news uh, as of late. We know Pat, Pat Maroon has been out lately. We know Justin Brezzo has also had an injury, and those two have uh, gotten much, much closer to a return to the NHL roster. I'll pull up the screenshot here from Adam Pell Pellerin. Uh, per Jim Montgomery, if all goes well, Pat Maroon is on track to play Saturday in Pittsburgh. A very, very huge boost to this lineup uh, after the loss of Brezzo. The physicality that Brezzo brought to this game uh, was definitely lacking, uh, but Pat Maroon will definitely bring back uh, that back to the lineup as he does uh, make his way back to the NHL setting. He's been out for a little while with back surgery, but he seems to be skating well in practice. He seems to be getting his rhythm back, and I'm very excited to see what he can do for this Bruins team uh, in the absence of Justin Brazzo. On the on the uh, the note of Justin Brazzo, I guess we could say, Brazzo has been skating with Derek Forbert before the Bruins practice uh, this morning, which is another good sign that he's getting, getting his feet back, getting uh, his momentum and everything back to a, a game level, and hopefully will eventually make the lineup soon. We don't know yet, as of uh, right now, the recording of this video, how soon he will be back. We know it was week to week a couple days ago, 
as far as I know, it's still week to week, but hopefully that return uh, comes a lot sooner than than was projected or is projected, and hopefully it will be before or at least early in the first uh, first round of the playoffs, which will be the best part for these guys. But one thing about these two coming back will be the uh, the, the the forwards are a bit crowded. Will be the the, the position of where they're going to play in this lineup. And I'm going to say this just for now. I think the top three lines are pretty much a lock. You know, I, I think that that is pretty much what we're going to see going into these playoffs, going into these final few games of the regular season, for the most part, with a few changes likely going to be made just to test things out if something goes wrong in the playoffs. But the fourth line, I think, is a, a little bit of a situation here that we're going to have to look at. Johnny Beecher, going to say he's safe. He's one that I think needs to be in this playoff lineup. He's been very well since the return to the NHL. Been excellent in the faceoffs and been a very good depth center and a future top center on this team. But James Van Riemsdyk and Jacob Lauko, two that I really am unsure about. I don't think James Van Riemsdyk is going to be in this lineup too much longer. I think he may come out for Pat Maroon. Could be Jacob Lauko, but I think those two are the ones that are really on the hot seat here in these final few games of the regular season and then hitting in the playoffs. So they might not have that playoff, uh, you know, game scenario ready for the playoffs be in the lineup for the playoffs, but it's good to have the depth of the forwards that they do right now, the Bruins do, heading into these uh, these playoffs, along if whether it's Lauko, Van Riemsdyk, Pat Maroon, uh, Justin Brazo, whether any of those are sitting, that's very good depth to have in case of an injury or in case of something going wrong. It's nice to see, but I do think JVR's out, Pat Maroon will be in, and I'm really not sure about Brazo. He's been playing very well, but the set, uh, the de- uh, la- sorry, the lack of... Um, playoff experience, the lack of NHL experience may be a bit of an issue, but he's been playing so well lately, I think it would be uh, it would be a wrong decision to not have him in for at least some games of the playoffs, as long as he is healthy enough to play. But one more final topic here, let me know what you think about that, that's a very uh, interesting one, I've seen a lot of mixed opinions on what's going to happen, but the final topic here of this video, Jim Montgomery has praised this team, uh, contrary to what we've seen a few weeks ago, where he said this team is not ready for the playoffs, and it's a good sign where Jim Montgomery is going back on his words and saying that this team is now looking good. This is what he had to say. He says, I think everybody's really comfortable with who we are. We need to execute the effort required and the physicality that's required. Montgomery said on Saturday, I think that's where our group uh, now has confidence, how to close out games. And that's one thing the Bruins have been really struggling with a few games ago, a few weeks ago. As of late, though, they've been very, very, very good on uh, closing out games, keeping games close, matching the physicality, even exceeding the physicality of the other team, their opponent, especially what we've seen in the Florida game. I think that's a very good sign going ahead in these playoffs. We've seen Florida come out physical, and Boston match that and beat them at their own game. So I do think that the Bruins are in a much better spot than they were when Jim Montgomery mentioned that this team was not ready for the playoffs. He said it He said it really well, and it might not have been going over well with fans saying this stuff, but that's what we needed to see. It really got this team going from what we've seen a few weeks ago to now, and a few more games for the playoffs. This team has to stay at that level, I think. We are going to have a fantastic playoffs if this does continue. So let me know what you think about Jim Montgomery, what he had to say here, the injuries, as well as Jesper Boquist. That's a really interesting one that I want to know what you guys think. No comment of the day today. I had a lot of news I wanted to discuss and didn't want to make this video way too long. So let me know what you think about those. But that's all I got here. If you did enjoy the video, make sure to give it a like. Make sure to hit the sub button as well. Like I said, we're very close to 1,000 subscribers. It would mean the world to me if we could hit that before the playoffs. Uh, we're going to have a very fun time in these uh, these upcoming weeks heading into the playoffs, but make sure to hit the sub button, like I said, we'll have it all here, so thank you for watching, hope you have a great day, see you later.